we are the first people to think of interactions as a form of data inside companies hmm. that is the new vantage point yeah okay see okay. think of it this way before facebook came along nobody thought who's friends with who is form of useful data right nobody thought of it that way right and what facebook basically did was it said no who is friends with whom is actually extremely useful data because what it does is it helps you predict if x buys something maybe their friend also buys something if yeah. a goes on vacation maybe b will go on vacation right Absolutely. so they yeah. they turn the social connections into data in their case yeah. what we are saying is hey there are so many more digital interactions happening in more and more companies but nobody thinks of that as data if you think of that as data the way to monetize it by helping those teams and companies yeah when we started the perspective was we focused primarily only on automation the idea was how do you build automation at scale how do you build something that would you know be able to automate the scale of a of a department or uh, or entire unit or a region and so on versus you know back then and perhaps even now automation heavily focuses on building small bots and so on so we built this very sophisticated distributed system um using which you can actually build very sophisticated automation of all shapes right. and sizes but subsequently we we stumbled onto an even more interesting problem mm -hmm. and that is uh very often our customers would say we actually in the field we saw lots of companies while there was a lot of buzz around automation there was a lot of there's a uh, there was lack of clarity as to when will automation work or not mm -hmm. and we found customers for example would use gut instinct and say oh my experience tells me this is when i should or mm, mm. or sometimes we found our customers hiring consulting companies who would advise them and so we kind of turned to ourselves and said hey isn't there a way that we can automatically figure out what to automate and then we built some very tiny prototype that actually could do this and then we mm. thought hey this is actually very interesting that means we have a piece of software that learns mm. from how you know uh, teams interact with software when they get their work done see automation there are lots of companies in this and that and somehow we felt we can't do both things equally well we can you know maybe hmm. make a choice um, right. and so that's when we fundamentally decided to do the pivot and so, so we had this flat we built this platform called scout we hmm. you know we called this this whole thing that we're building as a work graph and we mm -hmm. pivoted down to it and and that was essentially the rebirth of the company this was around 2018 or 2019 and that's when my colleague sam who's our ceo joined us um and the thing that i think appealed to sam was this idea of scout and how scout can be this can uh, discover an entirely new source of data inside companies right. it can really help teams mm -hmm. um, figure out what their bottlenecks are with data and what management can do to help teams what is true is that they're fundamentally interesting and they're fundamentally uh, altering in interesting ways in as i said right at the, at the very core some of the kinds of things that we do they all come from similar places right they are all some from you know network or the other yeah in the all that you're witnessing is people are more and more set of people have taken that and applied it to textual corpus we are taking that same technology and applying it to like work somebody will take it applied to some legal somebody will mm -hmm. apply it to images i know people who are in deep mind are applying it to film and so on so you will see all kinds of crazy applications so we are all children of this new generation in that sense of the same right. technology but my mom is an extraordinary influence on in my life for many reasons my mom has been my first and my best mathematics teacher my deep interest in mathematics and mm. mathematics physics and computer science really come 
through both my parents and certainly with my mom being a big part of it um, right. and so on and um and the older i grow i've learned to appreciate some other aspects of my mother which perhaps when i was younger i did not know mm-hmm. which is um of oh, what a remarkably bold person she is mm-hmm. when i was younger i didn't understand i guess you don't understand the world you know mm-hmm. being the only girl in college studying engineering a hostile atmosphere where you're the only girl and all the boys are teasing you you know would not talk to you will not share notes with you will not help you and they treat mm-hmm. you as this foreign creature or um or to her her boldness in in being you know the first woman engineer at telco ways draw mm-hmm. a lot of courage mm-hmm. from uh, some of the examples in her life yeah. and the other thing that i think uh, i find her uh, you know she she doesn't teach me but i can learn from her is mm-hmm. um, is is her incredible ability to reinvent herself you know uh, my mom was admitted to her phd in the us in the, in the 70s yeah. in this and that in computer science uh, so incredibly technically capable but ended up not having a technical career um uh, or or in the same way you know she taught computer science and at some point she decided to switch gears turn left and then started infosys foundation and made that right. her life's passion then decided to again turn left and start writing at the same time and so right. on so forth so she has always been able to sort of reinvent find positive meaning in any okay. situation i'm grateful to, to you know i'm quite spiritual i'm quite grateful for do many things as being born in a family like this and so uh, i don't see it as adding difficulty if anything hmm. i you know i'm just very lucky to be in this situation and hmm. uh, i don't feel that sense of burden in that way hmm. no we all have our own journey i have my own thing to do uh, my i've seen everybody's had their own journey hmm. uh, uh in fact rishi's had his own journey or my sister has her own journey my mom has had her own journey my father has had his own journey everybody in their own you know lifetimes have their own things to do so that's it my father for him i joking at him to him kids why family they're all uh, not even a second or third i don't even know their second or third place in his life there's only one place that was the idea of everything he thought that society could produce was an expression of what the what emphasis in his mind um, you know what it, he wanted it to be and so um, and he led an extremely rational life i mean it, it is i mean you can see like no startup today right like with the founder you know in some sense the founder would have a large lar- far larger stake or would have operated in very different ways and so on but he has this kind of a weird mix of of ideals and principles and so on so i sort of i saw him live all of these things in up close and personal everything company came first every single thing i can't remember a single time when the company did not come above his family or his wife and now some people may think it's negative i don't the second is i don't know if you're, again if it's necessarily talk to is yeah you know in the beginning before i started the company as to think so much of this journey is actually about technology mm-hmm. or filing patents solving hard problems technology problems and so on mm-hmm. um i have actually realized that um the technology problems are far easier uh mm-hmm. technology is actually not at all a hard problem no matter even if you invent new technology it's fundamentally a people issue how do you keep people together motivated aligned and moving in the same direction i don't know how to do that as yet in the same way but i find that really fascinating <laughs>